What's up, everybody? And today we're reacting to Imperium of Man Warhammer 40,000. This is by the Templin Institute. I will leave a link down below to the original video. Obviously, go over there, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Really important. Imperium of Man. I think I know a little bit. I don't know all of it, but I know a little bit. I did see another video by, is it Luton09? Um, that really goes into a lot of it it's called the Imp the emperor of man and it's a long series let me know if you want me to react to that uh but for now we're gonna watch this one it's about 16 minutes long excited to learn some more about um warhammer 40k and get a bit deeper into the lore now that i know the bobby basics so with that being said let's shut up let's pull this up and let's react <laughs> Okay. Hey everyone, just a quick note to say that our Patreon is now live, and at the time of this video, we've already smashed through our first five pledge goals. Nice. We've got a ton of new content coming, and more episodes every month, so if you'd like to vote on which spinoff gets made first and get some cool rewards for your trouble, be sure to check us out on Patreon. You'll find the link. Go over to his Patreon and have a quick look, guys, as well, okay? Make sure you check that out. Link in the description. Thanks. The Imperium of Man. Logo is so cool. Ooh, look at this. Some good animation. In the darkness of the far future, the worlds of mankind stand on the precipice of destruction. Okay. Beset on all sides by predatory alien empires and threatened from within by heretics, mutants, traitors, and worse. Yet even in this dying galaxy, in a time when peace has been forgotten and every hope seems lost, there stands a great bulwark between humanity and that which would destroy it. It seems like a lot of this is snippets of trailers, like I saw that big cathedral looking ship. But the way they've edited this, good, really good. It is a power of unimaginable scale in command of inexhaustible armies that hold back the eldritch terrors that await beyond. It is a regime built on benevolence and cruelty, repression and stagnation, okay. irrational superstition and bureaucratic corruption, a nation tempered in the fires of endless war. It is the 41st millennium, and rising from the light of ancient Terra stands boldly the great work of the Emperor. The so this is post Horus Heresy, I'm guessing. I'm guessing. I know a little bit about Horus Heresy, guys. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm becoming I'm becoming a 40k addict. I am. The Imperium of Man. It is commonly said that the Imperium presides over a million worlds, but the truth is far less simple. Every year, its dominion waxes and wanes as new systems are colonized or conquered and lost worlds are brought back into the fold. Okay. While elsewhere across the galaxy, planets are isolated and lost taken by Xenos or brought to ruin by rebellion. Hmm. The Imperium carries on only through the weight of its own immensity, ever expanding and ever declining. How are these races like the Imperium of Man and the Elves and um, blah, 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 like the Tau, how are they so sustain sustainable? So how are they still growing even though it's always war, even though people are constantly dying? Because to me, it seems like the death rate in Warhammer 40k in that universe is much higher than the birth rate. <laughs> so what it seems, because it's all about death. It's all about death. To think of it then as a single realm of defined borders and united territories is a fallacy. Against the enormity of the universe, wow. even the Imperium is spread thinly and its worlds might be separated by hundreds or even thousands of light years. Wow. Planets within the Imperium are separated as much by technology as distance. Even okay. within a single system, one world might be home to advanced industries and enriched with great wealth brought about by interstellar trade, while another might exist in squalor, its medieval population worshipping Imperial administrators as divine emissaries. Mm. This disparity is as much by design as by circumstance. There exists a great fear of technology that borders on superstition, and planetary governors might insist on restricting certain knowledge in order to keep their populations docile and subservient. Okay. The disparate and widespread nature of imperial holdings makes cataloging them completely unfeasible. So this is so vast, like so vast. 
that it seems like we might not even technically know all the chat all the like factions and chapters within imperium Mind. that's what i'm getting at here that it's so vast that there's still paths that we probably don't even know about and i'm sure that gives um the games workshop opportunity to create new factions and create new lore within the imperium of man all the time because it's so vast that's really cool although entire armies of administrative staff spend their lifetimes attempting to do so instead the imperium is divided into five administrative zones known as segmentum the segmentums of the imperium span the entire galaxy with the only limits to the imperial domain imposed by the range of the astronomicon so one of them if you go back there one of them's called valhalla <laughs> <laughs> with the only limits to the imperial domain Brilliant. imposed by the range of the astronomicon an immense psychic beacon projected by the emperor of mankind from within the golden throne the beacon provides the means for the ancient families of the navis nobilite to plot a course through the otherwise incomprehensible dimension known as the warp so the emperor who sits on his golden throne and gives everybody access to traveling via the warp does he do anything else? Does he like communicate between maybe some of the bosses of each faction? Does he arrange fights or is that strictly all he does? Because we know he's pretty much dead, right? And he's, he's obviously giving this opportunity to let people travel through the warp. But what else is he doing? What other kind of, is he doing anything else? Is he like, like as a psyker, is he doing, is he pushing humanity forward in any way? Because surely if he has a little bit of consciousness, he'd be very much against um all the religion that's being made because of him so i don't know guys let me know in the comments this nightmarish realm is the primary method used by the imperium for faster than light travel and remains so vital that should the emperor fail and the light of the astronomicon be severed then the imperium would quickly collapse into chaos and darkness the emperor of mankind remains the formal sovereign of the imperium although in the millennia since his body was shattered and entombed within the golden throne the rule of mankind has fallen instead to the council of the high lords of terra okay entrusted to interpret and enact the will of the emperor the high lords carry out the day-to-day -day decisions necessary to govern the imperium how old, how old are these um people though who are basically taking commands for the emperor so they're obviously his voice technically um how old are they they've been around since he was actually human or are these just new people constantly coming in being influenced by these religions about the emperor that are just pushing their own agenda See, i think this is the type of stuff i'm probably not going to learn in a video like this it's only 16 minutes long it's the stuff i'm going to learn in the in the books which i'm really excited about because i have started reading them and i'm very excited to learn more judgments of the high council affect the lives of endless trillions but the nature of the imperium prohibits any centralized governance from being universally enforced right instead the imperium makes use of countless organizations to keep the wheels of bureaucracy and war moving perhaps the largest of these is the adeptus administratum teeming with countless scribes and petty officials it administers the imperium at every level collecting tithes and taxes performing censuses and determining which threats to the Imperium must be dealt with and by which of the Imperium's myriad of military forces alongside a thousand other chores and duties. So there, the, the Adeptus Mechanus, Mechanics, Mechanus, I think it's something like that. They, even though they are part of the Imperium of Man and, the, Man and they're trying to push the agenda of the Imperium of Man, don't they, don't they have their own God, which is part of technology? So even if they have their own god, right, which I'm, I think I might be butchering this. They worship technology, right, and, and um, engines and kind of like all this mechanical parts that are put on the body. They worship that. So do they still worship the emperor? And if so, do they push their agenda? Or are they just part of the collective of Imperium and Man that are just pushing forward across the galaxy? Let me know in the comments down below. The administratum is a maze of subdivisions, departments, and offices, some conducting programs that are no longer needed, while others may have been abandoned entirely, its clerks doomed to perform a menial task that's purpose has been forgotten. Eesh, On Mars dwells the headquarters of the Adeptus Mechanicus, an ancient priesthood of technicians and engineers responsible for the construction and maintenance of all Imperial technology and equipment. Hell yeah. Granted a level of independence unequaled within the Imperium, the Mechanicum is viewed with suspicion by the rest of the Imperial administration. Their forge worlds operate without oversight, 
and their religion is viewed as almost heretical. Yeah, it's heretical because they view technology as their god, right? Or some sort of entity within technology, right? That's that's what I can remember from Bricky's video. Above all, the priesthood of Mars covet knowledge, and they guard their discoveries with jealousy. Binding the Imperium together through faith is the Adeptus Ministorum, the ecclesiastical hierarchy of the Imperial cult, which spreads the universal worship of the God Emperor of mankind. Right. Known commonly as the Ecclesiarchy, the organization wields considerable power, for it derives its authority from the common belief in the Emperor's divinity. Even by Imperial standards, it is a complex and baffling hierarchy of priests, confessors, cardinals, and dozens of other ranks and titles. All across the Imperium, its agents guide the soul of mankind, purging heresy and inspiring true devotion. Okay. Of all the Imperial organizations, however, the sanctioned psychers of the Adeptus Astra Telepathica, the guardians of Imperial law in the Adeptus Arbides, the royal guardsmen of the Adeptus Custodes, oh, or yeah. even the vaunted killers of the Officio Assassinorum, no single institution holds greater power or instills more fear across the galaxy than the Imperial Inquisition. I tell you what though, some of these names, they come up with some pretty damn cool names, don't they? These Inquisition people though are awesome though. I'm a big fan of these. There's also a game, right? Isn't there a game about them? Um, I think I saw that. Let me know in the comments which um, Warhammer 40k games you want me to play. Because there's a few. There's Space Marine, which I'm definitely going to play. And there's a few others as well that look really cool. Inquisitors are charged with protecting the Imperium against the malevolent influences of the galaxy. Yeah. Whether they be the allure of alien philosophies or the machinations of the ruinous powers. Its members may pass through doors that would be closed to all others. And there are very few in the Imperium who can refuse to execute their orders without complaint or delay. Interesting. The Inquisition operates outside of the control of even the High Lords of Terra and answer only to the Emperor and themselves. Fair one. While such organizations have wide-reaching authority, their direct involvement in the governance of individual planets and star systems is relatively uncommon. For as long as the Imperial tithe is paid and obligations and responsibilities are met, the Imperium is content to allow various Imperial commanders and planetary governors to rule their worlds, systems, or even sectors however they see fit. Yep. In this way, the Imperium resembles some manner of feudal confederacy, with a hierarchy of lords and vassals stretching from the lowliest page to the Emperor himself. Such a system, while effective at maintaining order and enforcing Imperial authority, means that very few worlds are governed in the same manner, and mobilizing these discordant vassals and feudal lords is often taxing and slow. It's crazy, isn't it, how they were just talking about then how, like, governing all these places takes a long time. They're so vast, and um, the Imperium of Man spread so far across the galaxy. How do they communicate? Like, do they, like... Because do they have like an internet? Is the Adeptus Mechanus know some sort of way to communicate between them all? Obviously, that's another question that goes into about the Emperor. Is he, com is he actually communicating? Or is he strictly just showing people a path through the warp, you know? Like, how are they collectively pu pushing as mankind with kind of a consensus across the board of what to do? Like, how does that happen? In a galaxy of carnage, it is by the will and strength of humanity's armies, rather than its bureaucrats, that has allowed the Imperium to endure for so long, while other powers have withered and failed. Right, Mankind right, right. has always excelled in warfare, and the Imperium commands a vast array of powerful forces, rivaled by nothing else in the universe. The backbone of Imperial strength is the Astra Militarum, also known as the Imperial Guard. Yes. Consisting of countless millions of trained men My and boys. women, often armed with nothing more than a las gun, a bayonet, and their faith in the Emperor, Imperial Guardsmen can be found in nearly every garrison and battlefield. They are the first line of defense and the focal point of any crusade. While the They are really cool. The fact that they're just men, no like cyborg implants, no like adapting like and transforming into giant people they're just guys with guns trying to make a difference so cool so cool the imperial guard musters countless armies 
Certain worlds have won great acclaim across the Imperium for the quality of their soldiers and the heroics of their regiments, their yeah. deeds and commanders entering the Imperial Pantheon of Legends. It is the superhuman Adeptus Astartes who have come to symbolize the might of the Imperium, however. Elite warriors gifted with immense strength, size, resilience, and intellect. Look how tall that guy is. Look at that thick boy with his massive hammer. Is that literally Warhammer? Is that the Warhammer from the title? You know? The thick boy right there. Elite warriors gifted with immense strength, size, resilience, and intellect. These space marines have inherited the Hell traditions yeah. of the Emperor himself and are one of the few forces available to the Imperium that can rapidly respond to a developing threat. The Astartes are divided between roughly 1,000 chapters, each with their own storied history and proud traditions. 1,000 chapters? Do we know them all? There's no way. There's no way we know them all. Surely, like, they've given us a handful, but they've, put, they've said 1,000 just for room for expansion. Surely. Though few in number, a squad of space marines can turn the tide of battle, while an entire chapter can shift the balance of a war. Hell yeah. In space, the Imperium calls upon the great war fleets of the Imperial Navy. The starships it operates are legion, ranging from single-man fighters and bombers to ancient battleships capable of terrible displays of destructive power. Damn. In addition to its armadas, the Navy also operates colossal space stations, great ports, and distant anchorages, always at the ready to deliver the forces of humanity to the next grand battle zone. It's funny how they've gone for the gothic setting with the ships. Like, surely that isn't like, I don't know, functional. You know what I mean? As a spaceship, surely there's better ways to design it. But they're like, no, let's make it look like an old cathedral because we support the emperor. <laughs> The enemies of the Imperium are simply too many and too varied for any single organization to Brushed. effectively combat. And there <laughs> exist a great many specialized orders and detachments used in only the most specific or dire circumstances. Okay. The Grey Knights, the Death Watch, the Orders Militant of the Adepta Sororitas, the Skitari Legions, and Collegia Titanica of Mars. The forces of the Imperium are as innumerable as their foes, the names are so cool. The Grey Knights, though. I'm getting kind of keen on them, guys. Is that what the Space Wolves are, the Grey Knights? Let me know in the comments. Grey Knights are Space Wolves. Let me know what I should do. And it is only through their ceaseless vigilance that the Imperium is sustained. In spite of its unlimited military potential, during extreme circumstances when the price of retaking a world is simply too high or the risk of spreading mutation, disease, or heresy too great, the highest authorities in the Imperium can order exterminatus. Through orbital bombardment, virus wow. bombs, cyclonic torpedoes, or other instruments of extermination, a planet's biosphere is completely destroyed. Good job they're not around right now with the whole virus. They would have probably destroyed Earth, right? along with all life on it. This terrible order is rarely given, and yeah. only as a last resort. Which reminds me, is Earth actually around in 40k? Is Earth around right now? I wonder. I don't know if it is or not. If the Imperium has ever known an age of peace, then it is an era long forgotten. It was in war that the Imperium was founded, and through war it has endured. In the 30th millennium, from the terrors of the Age of Strife, when anarchy, war, and destructive technological regression brought man to the edge of extinction, there arose the Emperor. Yeah. He served as a guiding hand that brought man back from the brink. Speaking of guiding hand, let me move me out of the way. Look at that thick hand. There's a massive claw. Look at that. <laughs> Golden Boy's doing well with his lightsaber and ushered in a new golden age for all of humanity. Using his legions of thunder warriors, the yes. ancient precursors of the space marines. Oh, they, well, can, we, can we play as them? They're so cool. They're really cool. Can you still play as them? Global order was restored across Terra, and once again, the planet became a hub of unceasing activity, production, and planning. Aligning himself with the tech priests of Mars, the Emperor okay. and his legions set off across the galaxy in search of the Primarchs, 20 beings of extraordinary power crafted from the Emperor's own genetic material. Sounds Seized cool. Seized and hidden by the dark gods of chaos, over time each Primarch was found 
and they joined the Emperor's Great Crusade as his most capable commanders, diplomats, and warriors. Isn't this like where the Horus Heresy comes into play though? Where things start going upside down for the, for the Emperor? Thousands upon thousands of human worlds were liberated and united under the Imperium. But in this moment of triumph, as the Emperor worked in secret to bring about his greatest gift to mankind, the galaxy descended once more into chaos and war. War Master Horus, yep. the favored son of the Emperor and greatest of his <clears throat> generals, was manipulated by the dark gods of chaos and together with nine of his brothers split the Imperium in two. Damn. When the Horus heresy finally came to an end after nine years of civil war and 50 million books, the traitor legions <laughs> had been beaten and Horus slain. But the effort had laid... Spoiler alert, spoiler alert for whoever's trying to get through 50 books right now. Jeez. Waste to much of the Imperium, and the Emperor, mortally wounded in his last great confrontation with Horus, was sealed inside the Golden Throne, now physically broken with only his immense psychic will remaining. Yeah, okay. And the millennia since, the dream of the Emperor has wilted and died. Damn. The promise of knowledge and understanding has been replaced by ignorance and fear. Endless war is now the purpose of the Imperium, and each century brings grave new threats and short-lived triumphs. I wonder if they'll do something like that again with the law, though, where they bring one character through that kind of unites humanity in a way and goes forward to, to fight something like the Necrons. Because let's be honest, the Necrons have defeated practically gods twice, practically. So I feel like they could probably take on the Imperium of Man pretty easily. So I wonder if they, like, I don't know in the future of the lore, if they'll pick like one character that comes through the ranks and just commands the Imperium of, Imperium of Man as a whole and takes on these people. But then again, they're all too obsessed with the Emperor, aren't they? So that would be heresy, I guess. Orc warbands spread unchecked across the stars. Tyranid hive fleets circle the galaxy like predatory sharks, all while ancient and young races alike work yeah, to tau. usurp the Imperium's position of superiority. Even the light of the Astronomicon has begun to flicker and fade. In the aftermath of Abaddon the Despoiler's 13th Black Crusade and the fall of the Cadian Gate, unprecedented warp storms now stretch across the galaxy oh, and geez. the Imperium is once more split in two. If the warp is always around, why do we need the Emperor then? Why do we need the Emperor to get through it? Is it strictly he can only open it and let you get through? Is he, is he literally a sat-nav? Is he like your Google Maps? Is that who we go to instead? Is it like, are you in the ship and you're like, oh, we need to go somewhere, search for it on Google Maps. But instead it's like, search for it using the Emperor's psyche. You pop it in where you want to go and the Emperor's like, here's your direction, guys. Have fun. Is that all he's used for? <laughs> Traitor legions and alien armies besiege countless worlds. Entire sectors have disappeared into the abyss and few dare speculate what nameless horrors run rampant in the weakened and isolated corners of the galaxy. Yep. Worse still is the knowledge secretly reported to the High Lords of Terra that the mechanisms of the Golden Throne have begun to fail and the knowledge necessary to repair them has been lost. Oh. Before being executed for their heresy, prophets across the galaxy say now is the time of ending when the Imperium will finally collapse into a trembling collection of shattered realms before being swallowed up by the encroaching darkness. Wow, so it's ending. I mean, Yet rumors abound that legends thought lost to time have been reborn. There are whispers that hidden vaults on Mars have been unlocked, and powerful new soldiers and armaments are now fighting across the galaxy. Look at them space marines with like the, the wings across the face. That's so cool. Holy shit. Holy <laughs> I always forget to use the beep, guys. If now is truly the time of ending, then the Imperium is not content to stand idly by. Across the worlds of the Imperium, new crusades have been proclaimed, okay. great armies raised, and mighty battle fleets armed and sent forth against the enemy. Hell yeah. For in the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war. There's literally zero hope for anyone. Everyone's gonna die, no matter what. Everything sucks. The Templin Institute in the universe investigates of alternate worlds and realities. 
If you've enjoyed this video and I would have. like to directly support us, I vote would. in polls to determine future topics, and receive That's some nice. cool rewards, please consider pledging to our Patreon page. Hell yeah. Guys, go and check out all these socials right here. Check out the Patreon. There'll be a link down below to the OG video. Go over there, like, subscribe, and turn on notifications to their channel because that was an awesome video. That was phenomenal. That was great. Big fan, guys. Big, big fan of that. So what did I learn? I learned that the Imperium of Man is way bigger than I thought it was, and it is actually coming to an end. So what happens if it comes to an end? Are we actually going to see a new kind of rising of these special soldiers that have been unlocked from the vaults of Mars that kind of give them power that we haven't seen before? Is that something we're going to get in new books? If there's new books showing what's going to happen in the future, I'd like to read them concurrently with prequels like the Horus Heresy because I'd like to know what's going on right now in the world of in the universe of 40k i think it would be fascinating let me know in the comments should i do space wolves or gray knights should i um paint oh well, i actually when this video goes up i would have already painted some i would have already painted some guys but let me know what i should start also is earth still around let me know in the comments down below what the crack is with that and uh, also comment down below what videos you'd like me to react to next a fantastic video by the templin Inst templin institute fantastic members you're amazing. I love you. I couldn't do this without you. I honestly couldn't make videos every single day if it wasn't for these members right here. So thank you for supporting the channel as much as you do. I truly appreciate it. Links down below to all my socials, including the two links to Discord. We've got the military link for all things military. That's getting fit for the military. Join the military. Join that Discord. Some great advice in there. We've got the second Discord. That's all things geeky like Warhammer, SCP, D&D, Halo, Metro, Star Wars. Go and join the Geek Discord. Also, link down below to my podcast and my Twitch stream where I stream Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And also, link down below to the second channel, Original Human Geek, where we do some awesome stuff like D&D &D and some other fun stuff. Go and check it out, guys. Until next time, I love you all. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.